when I look at my week three slate of NFL games, I keep coming back to the Detroit Lions versus the Atlanta Falcons. A couple of different reasons here. And I think that it's storylines, it's players, it's stars, it's things that we all want to know and that we all want to see. Now, I want to talk about the teams in general first. For the Atlanta Falcons, they're trying to prove a little something. Thomas Brown, Bryce Young, the offensive line, the continuity of it all, Adam Thielen's of the world, Hayden Hurst's of the world, Miles Sanders, they're still trying to get it together. So I think that the defense was playing with their hair on fire in week one, but the Atlanta Falcons won that game. They ran the football, they got the ball to their weapons. A lot of people, though, and then you look at the Green Bay Packers winning week two. Now, I think the Packers had some opportunities to win that game, but hats off to Arthur Smith, hats off to Desmond Ritter, and those guys for pulling through getting that game out of there. And I think still, you look at the New Orleans Saints. You look at what they did on Monday Night Football, and a lot of people are saying, if Derek Carr can get to just any of what he was in 2014s, 2015s, if he can get back to that Derek Carr with the Amari Cooper, then you're looking at something very dangerous. And also, we're looking at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Baker Mayfield, his hair is on fire. He's playing good football. You're looking at Mike Evans. Are they, do they really want to trade Mike Evans the way he's playing right now, the way the team is winning? You're looking at the Vita Vares. You're looking at the Devin's White. I talked about Devin White and his resurgence, how he has to get back to that all-pro level. I'm seeing some good football. I'm seeing some good football out of Levante David and those guys. Just watch out for him. Now, getting back to the Atlanta Falcons, they don't care about none of that. Everything I just said, they don't care. They want to prove that they are the team that has a shot to win the South. And I think they do have a shot to win the South. It's not saying they don't have a good defense because they do. We can talk about some of these guys. I mean, you look at A.J. Terrell having the bounce back season. Jesse Bates, one of the top five safeties in all of football. We can go with the other guys. Richie Grant, he's another young guy. Arnold Ebicady, Troy Anderson, Caden Ellis coming over from the Saints with his defensive coordinator. There's some things working there. You look at David Ayamonas. You look at Calais Campbells. They're going to try to get after the quarterback. They got guys that can cover in the back end, but offensively, I think that's what I think that's where we get a little tough with the show starts a little bit because Desmond Ritter, I talked about the Detroit Lions and the Atlanta Falcons both extensively during the offseason, talked about their draft, talk about the team outlook and kind of previews and what I saw. Now, I did not know. Now, I knew they viewed Bijan a little differently. And it's funny because the Detroit Lions, they viewed their guys, Jameer Gibbs out of Alabama. They viewed him higher than Bijan. So that's a storyline we have to watch. Just talking about one of those things, that's going to give Bijan a little extra motivation. That's going to give Jameer a little extra motivation because in weeks one and two, he was playing alongside David Montgomery. Now he has Craig Reynolds, some of the other backs in the backfield, but this is your show. This is going to be Bijan's show. He was unleashed last week against Green Bay. This is going to be Jameer Gibbs' show. He's going to get unleashed in the passing game, in the running game. Now I have some things he has to clean up. We saw the pick six, but like I said, though, this is a guy who's extremely talented, both of them. Got to watch out for that. And you talk about all the other weapons, the Drake Londons of the world, the Mac Hollins of the world, the Kyle Pitts of the world. It comes down to that guy under the center. Now, like I said, though, in the first two games, I look at Carolina, I look at Green Bay. We've seen Atlanta show they know how to win football games thus far in the first two weeks. What we haven't seen, though, can they score with a guy in an offensive mind like the combination of Jared Goff and Ben Johnson? That's my question for you guys, because... I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, this, this gives me the vibes of a hard-nosed football game. I'm seeing Bijan running. I'm seeing Jameer Gibbs running. I'm feeling that. I'm feeling, I'm feeling these two teams leaning on their offensive lines. And then when they have the shot, go to those outside receivers. Go to that St. Brown. Go to that Josh Reynolds when you have that shot. Sam Laporta's of the world. Like I said, for the Atlanta Falcons, Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Mac Hollins, when you have it. But I don't know if that's how this game is going to go. And I think that if... The Detroit Lions come out with their hair on fire. And this is a team who's mad. And they're borderline pissed off about the loss to the Seattle Seahawks. I'm getting there because that's the emotion and what the Detroit Lions are feeling. C.J. Garner-Johnson, that guy is a menace. He wants to win football games, but he's on IR right now. James, the problem, Houston, he's on IR right now. Josh Pascal, he's on IR right now. You're looking at the offensive line. They're battling a couple things, but if you don't have Big V, still got Graham Glasgow. I think, I, I pray for the Detroit Lions' sake, Taylor Decker comes back this week, but if not, you have Matt Nelson still. You have a Dan Skipper on the practice squad. That's just options. And then, I think that for the Atlanta Falcons, they're fairly healthy. I, I would say they're fairly healthy when looking at their depth chart injury reports. So you wonder, is Ben Johnson going to come out and take those shots early? 
is he going to push the ball down the football field? They're going to come out with those drives with those first 10 to 12 scripted plays and put points on the board. Because if that happens, now I want to see the Atlanta Falcons. And this is going to tell me if the Atlanta Falcons are for real. I'm not saying they're for fake right now, but it's week two. Got to understand that a little bit. But if they come out and put up those points with a Detroit Lions team and an offensive coordinator who I think will get a head coach job very soon, <laughs> it's tough for Detroit fans, but Ben Johnson is that man. He, he's that guy, truthfully. So Desmond Ritter, though, like I said, I have the film breakdown on him. I talked about him. Can he get the football to those weapons? The offensive line is good. You look at Caleb McGarry. You look at some of the other guys, Jake Matthews of the world. Matthew Bergeron stepping in as a rookie. It's Chris Lindstrom, he got the bag. So I'm looking at that, and I'm saying the Detroit Lions, who struggled to get the pass rush. And will this be a week? We're looking at guys. Let's talk about it. We're looking at the Charles Harris's of the world, Benito Jones, Lee McNeils. Can they manage to not only get that pass rush against a solid offensive line, actually an above average two in the lead offensive line. I want to give the Atlanta Falcons their credit. Can they get that going? And if not, you still have to stop the run. Alex Anzalone calling you up. Jack Campbell calling you up. Derek Barnes calling you guys up. And it's to the point where I'm seeing some things. We talk about the Detroit Lions and they drafted two guys in the top 20, Jameer Gibbs, Jack Campbell. And they aren't truthfully starting just yet. Because David Montgomery is a two-headed monster. You understand that. Jameer Gibbs is still getting his snaps. But with the Jack Campbell experience, you have Derek Barnes and Alex Anzalone. Now, Jack Campbell has been getting his fair share of play. But like I said, you want to see some things in this game because I think it's going to be a run-first team. It is a run-first team. Actually, they're right now, the Atlanta Falcons, they are they're fourth in rushing attempts per game. So you understand what it is. You understand how it's going to go down. And you look at Jared Goff, you look at his weapons. Desmond Ritter, his weapons. He has them all. So I'm talking about that, and I'm talking about these defenses stepping up to the challenge. Jerry Jacobs, Cameron Sutton, Kirby Joseph, Brian Branch. Some of these guys going to have to step up in the back end. And looking at that safety position, now you're looking at it. Amelia Fuanwu, some of these different types of guys because C.J. Gardner-Johnson is on IR. And I don't know if he's going to come back before the season's out, but still right now you don't have him. And when I'm looking at that, it gives me the feeling that it's going to go one of two ways. Like I said, it can either be a game that the Detroit Lions will blow out the roof, or it's going to be a game where I think that the Atlanta Falcons are going to turn it, turn it into that fist fight. What do you guys think down below in the comments? I'm dropping a lot of knowledge right now about what I feel about the game and just my overall outlook and my preview when I talk about it. The Detroit Lions have been stopping the run thus far. You know, when they look at some of the teams they've been playing, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Seattle Seahawks, and you have Isaiah Pacheco, you have Zach Charbonnet, Kenneth Walker, they've done great thus far. And I think when you go converse and you look at the Atlanta Falcons, they've been good against the pass. Even though Jordan Love, he had some success early on, but when it mattered the most, they got those stops in the back end. So I'm going to let you guys leave with that knowledge. Who's going to win this game and who would the win mean more for? Does it mean more for the Atlanta Falcons or does it mean more for the Detroit Lions? I think both teams have a lot to win for. I think both teams, when you look at it, the Atlanta Falcons, like I said, they're trying to prove something. You look at the Detroit Lions, like I said, they're trying to prove they can hang with the Dallas Cowboys. They're trying to get up there with the 49ers. And yes, it's early in that aspect, but you think about it in all of the hype, all of the expectations, Brad Holmes going all in. This is a team they are probably going to make a move at the deadline. So just watch out for it. But if you lose a game like this, it's kind of tough. So I want you guys to let me know who would this win mean more for down below in the comments. I think it's important for both teams, but that's going to do it for today's show. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And now...